you so much for coming. I am Chef AJ, and I have been vegan for 41 and a half years as of March 1st, and I really was inducted into a vegan hall of fame. Who knew there is such a thing? And it's true that a lot of the speakers here, Dr. Clapper, Dr. Campbell, Brenda Davis are, are in it, Dr. Gandhi is in it, so that's really one of my proudest accomplishments. So today's class is one of my favorites, is how to satisfy your sweet tooth without using sugar. I use the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit, so help me God. Based or vegan, I get uh, I get uh, um, asked to speak in places like hospitals and spas, wonderful places like Rancho La Puerta and the Oaks, where people are not even vegan. So even if people don't want to be vegan, and I hope people will consider being vegan, I'm really passionate that people not eat sugar. Sugar is not healthy for humans. It's not healthy for children and other living things. Because especially because you can get your sweetness from the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit. And I know that because for five years I was the executive pastry chef at Sante Restaurant in Los Angeles, which was not a vegan restaurant, and I made all my desserts sweet only with fruit. And we had celebrity clientele that still I, well, up until I moved out of Los Angeles a few weeks ago, would make for still today. So you don't need sugar to make life sweet. I know Americans eat over 150 pounds of sugar per person per year. I haven't had any sugar since July 6, 2003. So somebody's eating my share out there. That's a lot of sugar. That's 900 calories a day from something that isn't even food. It's actually an anti-nutrient. You know, fruit is about two to 300 calories a pound. Sugar is 1,800 calories a pound. You take the fruit and you you take everything good about it and you know it takes about three feet of sugar cane to make one teaspoon of sugar nobody's going to eat three feet of sugar cane so hopefully you'll know that or taste these desserts and realize that you're not going to know first of all most people won't know they're even vegan and second that they don't have sugar so what when, when you taste these desserts so it's really important that you taste them in order of increasing sweetness in my opinion because if you eat the chocolate mousse and then go to the apple pie rice pudding you're not going to think it's sweet enough so these these desserts have various different levels of sweetness. They are from, I actually have three books. One of them is an ebook called A Date with Dessert, which soon will be in print on Amazon. So I'm doing two recipes from Unprocessed, one from my new book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, and two from A Date with Dessert. So we're going to start with the apple pie. <laughs> Why do I touch it, you know? Yeah, I knew it was hot. The apple pie rice pudding. This is one of my favorite recipes. This is not going to be very sweet. Any recipe that I have, if you feel is not sweet enough, you can make more sweet by adding more. My primary sweetener is dates. And yes, dates are a little bit more calorically dense because they're dried fruit compared to apples, which are 200 calories a pound. They're about 1,300 calories a pound. But I like, like, what I like about dates is at least they're a whole food. They're found in nature, which means they have water and fiber and vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and antioxidants and micronutrients, whereas sugar has none of that. And when, when you have sugar that's with the fiber, a lot of that is mitigated in the, it, you, it, doesn't, it doesn't have the same effect on the body when you're eating fruit. And I was a sugar addict for 43 years. Some of you may know my story that I used to be obese, almost 200 pounds. And I, up until I was 43 years old, I didn't eat any fruits and vegetables. I started every day with a Coke Slurpee with eight pumps of vanilla syrup, and I drank Dr. Pepper Big Gulps, 48 ounces for lunch, because back then they didn't have a bigger size. And, and so, <laughs> Even though I probably don't eat most of these desserts now, with the exception of probably two of them, and I, I can explain why later, the dates really were like methadone to me. They helped me get off the white sugar and the white flour. And so I would much rather see people using fruit than, than sugar. So there's not gonna be any dates in this apple pie rice pudding. I'm using raisins for sweetening. So if you taste it and you go, you know, because your, your palate's not quite there yet, you can always add a little bit of either date syrup. The brand that I use is organic. It's called I Love Date Lady. And if you use my name, Chef AJ, you get a 15% discount. Or you can use the recipe from my book on processed. I believe it's on page 60 for date paste. I always have date paste in my freezer or refrigerator and just add a few tablespoons. I love to use my Instant Pot electric pressure cooker. Are there any Instant Pot lovers here? Yeah, oh my God, fantastic. They still have the discount with my name, AJ, but now it's only $10 since the price went down. 
the three quart, the six quart, and the eight quart. What I love about this recipe is you can make it in the three quart, but you can also do it on a pot, on a stove, or even in a pressure, uh, on a slow cooker. Another thing I love about this recipe is sometimes you just have leftover rice or you eat leftover millet or leftover quinoa, and it's a great use of this. And this, this is a nice change of pace from your morning oatmeal. So we're just gonna put the leftover rice in the pan, four cups, and then we're gonna add the non-dairy milk. Um, I don't know what they're using here, non-dairy milk, so I I think you should use the, the one that you like the best that doesn't have sugar. There are brands now where there's just something plus water. So like um, Elmhurst and Tree, Three Trees makes almond milk with almonds and water and nothing else. So those are my very favorite. They are tend to be a little bit more expensive. They're found in the refrigerated section. Um, so those would be my favorite. But you know, if you, if you know anything about Dr. Campbell's work, it's so important to just not have dairy. Whatever non-dairy milk you'll use is the best because it's just so much better than dairy. But if you can have soy, which I happen to be allergic to soy, the uh, soy milk is very clean. You can generally get a soy milk that's just soybeans and water. <coughs> so those are great. Uh, I love almond milk because it's fairly low in calories. But anyway, whichever one you like. If you don't have to worry about fat in your diet, coconut milk would be fantastic in here. And it's very easy to make your own non-dairy milk. Literally, take a tablespoon of almond butter with three cups of water in the blender. You've got almond milk. You can do the same thing with oats. You can do the same thing with brown rice. It's very easy to make your own. Then you don't have to worry about the packaging. There's a lot of controversy about some of the ingredients in almond milk. And I don't mean like they added oil, sugar, or salt. Things like carrageenan and palmitate so it's probably better to just buy the cleanest one you can but again even the uncleanest non-dairy milk is better than any kind of dairy milk so here we have some raisins I what color are these not brown what are, purple whatever I prefer yellow raisins I find that they're sweeter but this is fine so we're gonna put those in and, and this will make much milk did you um, you guys have the recipes in your book. I believe it was four cups. Oh, by the way, all the recipes are in your book that has all the dates that we're doing stuff. And so then we have the apples. Now these are cut very nice and very thin, but I would recommend instead cutting them, chopping them. There's a wonderful tool you can get for $20 at Bed Bath & Beyond called the Vidalia Chop Wizard. It's primarily for onions, but it's great for making everything into perfect cubes, zucchini, uh, carrots, beets, and apples. So this is this is a little bit going to be harder to eat because of slices. And so now our seasonings. So there's a spice called apple pie rice pudding, which you can get at pretty much any store like Kroger's, Penzi's, Savory Spice. When you don't have it, you kind of just make your own by using cinnamon and nutmeg. Now one of the things I do is when I make recipes over and over like this one, I put all the spices in a little spice jar that's already been used and I label it and it's, I just pull it out, it's easier. A little bit of cardamom, this is a really, cardamom is a very powerful spice so don't use a lot, I believe it's an eighth or a quarter of a teaspoon. And this is either cocaine or vanilla powder, I'm not sure, <laughs> let me see. Oh, it's vanilla powder. Okay. Well, because my vanilla powder is brown. This was white. What brand oh, do you use? So, what brand do I use? Um, so, what brand I use and what brand they're using here? No, I, I, I buy the, the whatever I can find on Amazon. I buy a vanilla powder that's literally just vanilla. What vanilla powder is, is just vanilla beans that have been ground up. So, why do I use vanilla powder? Okay, so for the last 10 years, I've been a guest chef at the True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California. And Dr. Goldhammer is very strict about an SOS-free diet. No sugar, no oil, no salt. Almost all vanilla extract has alcohol, which is not favorable for especially people trying to avoid alcohol. And actually, when I was a pastry chef at the restaurant, we couldn't use it either because if somebody was in rehab for alcoholism, they can't even have an extract with alcohol, so we had to use alcohol-free, which is delicious, but it contained glycerin, and glycerin um, is sugar. So when I started working at True North in 2011, the only choice was to use vanilla beans. Vanilla beans are very expensive. They can be three to six dollar a bean. So I, you can make your own vanilla water, which will last three weeks in your fridge by taking two vanilla beans in a cup of water, and that's fine. But vanilla powder, it, it just lasts longer, and it's very, it's very potent. So while it may be $20 for this tiny little bag, it will last a long time because you literally only use about a half a teaspoon. So the brand that I have in my home right now is called Wild Wild Foods, I think. But again, if you you know, if, 
vanilla is the second most expensive spice in the world, second only to saffron, right. And while it does make food, make, make desserts, bump it up, taste delicious, if, if I don't have it, I don't use it, it's fine. It's just, it, it's, it's just a, a very lovely spice. So basically you just boil this for about 20 minutes until it's done. What's nice about this rice pudding is it's good hot, it's good cold, it's good at room temperature, and if you have too much, which has happened to me, if you have a food dehydrator, spread it on the trays and you have these yummy crackers. So it's, it's multi-use. But please make sure you eat this first because it won't be sweet enough otherwise. I have a friend that for whatever reason doesn't eat rice and she makes this with millet, cooked millet, and it's also delicious. All right, so now we'll move on to the next recipe, which is the decadent chocolate mousse. This will be the richest thing on your plate, so this might be the thing you want to eat last. So again, I apologize, I'm not so familiar with this kind of cookware. So first thing I want to do is melt the chocolate. And so I don't know what kind they're using, but I'm assuming it's non, it smells really good. It's non-dairy, and that is already on, and I'm gonna melt it with the date syrup. Is it chocolate? I don't think it is because it smells so good. I don't think it is. Now, now here's the prop, here's the thing. So you write a book and you say something about something and then they change it. So in the macrobiotic world where this cruise was based, they used to have a brand of chocolate chip called Sunspire that was grain sweet and so it was less sugar than using white sugar. They've taken it off the market. They've done that before and uh, maybe it will be back, maybe it won't. So I personally have not, oh, actually there is a chocolate chip now that you can find without sugar. I've seen it at Whole Foods. It's literally 100% cacao. You can find it now. What? Oh, is the ones where the grain sweetened though? I, they got them. Good, good, great, terrific. So David's saying these are Sunspire. You can get 100% cacao chips. I, I'm seeing the bag in my head from Whole Foods. I want to say Lily's, but I'm not sure. But you can actually get it. But when it has no sweetener whatsoever, you're going to have to taste it because that means it's going to be very bitter. But as you as you neuroadapt and get used to eating things that are less sweet, you'll find that things like bitter that you won't need as much sweetener. So this is going to melt really fast. When you're melting chocolate, not over a double boiler. Always pay attention, be stirring because if you scorch it or burn it, it's not going to taste good. So just be very mindful. Like don't walk away when you're doing this, or even if like some people can even melt it in the microwave. What was the noise before? Hi, who are you? Andrew. Hi, here, take a picture right here. <laughs> and, you know, it's so funny. I was so fat for 52 years, and now, and now I finally don't have a big butt, and now they're in. It's just not fair. I mean, it's so not fair. It's like I'm, I'm never the right weight at the right time. It's, it's, but it's like, um, it's not fair. Look at how beautiful that. I don't know if you guys. Oh, they're not. They're not. They're not uh, broadcasting it on the screen. Yeah. Well, they are. Oh. Oh, wow, that's far. But anyway, it's nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. So that's perfect. So we'll turn this off. If I can't even see where off is. Anyway, it's beautiful. Nothing like beautiful melted chocolate. So we're going to use that. Is this not? Is this plugged in? Oh, that works. Okay, so. With the Vitamix, I'm going to take this off the thing. So we're going to make the mousse. This is very easy. This recipe, I'm telling you, you can serve to regular. Actually, all the recipes you can probably serve to regular people. Maybe the apple pie rice pudding is not going to be sweet enough for some palates, but if it's for breakfast, how sweet do you need it, right? But this one, we do this at Rancho La Puerta, which is this wonderful spot in Mexico, and uh, they love it. So. You guys know what this is, right? Yeah. And people say they hate tofu. How do you hate tofu? It's, it's nothing. I mean, it doesn't, it, tofu has, I mean, yes, if you ate it like this, but it has, it, it takes on the flavor of whatever you put it in. It's completely neutral. I mean, yes, if you gave somebody just this white block, I could, I could see that. But people won't know that it, uh, it, it is made out of tofu. Now, for people like me that are allergic to soy, um, what you could use is avocado. 
you could do avocado instead. That would work really, really well. So we're using what's called the Mori Yu Tofu. These come in aseptic boxes, which is really nice. For, for desserts, you want to make sure you do use the, the silken tofu. The, the tofu that comes in water, which is great for your savory dishes, it's, it's not as smooth. It won't make silky desserts like the silken tofu. And the Mori Yu Silken Tofu comes in firm, extra firm, and just like my guy. Oh, sorry, I forgot. There's a kid in. Uh, I've never seen if my friends still care. So the tofu comes in firm and extra firm. And uh, I had a great joke, which come to my room and I'll tell you what it was going to be. Um, yeah, and it, it, so so I like to use the firmest one just because it'll set up. But even if you use the soft, it will set up because when chocolate melted chocolate refrigerates, it's going to get it's to get hard again. I, I'm not I'm not meaning to be like this. These are just the words that are cooking. Oh, God. oh boy. They should put me on at night. I should be the midnight entertainment. That's what I should be, let me tell you. But you know, I can't help it. You know, I mean I guess I could, but um, you know they say you can take they, you can take the, the girl out of comedy, but you can't take the comedy out of the girl. So let me please explain that I was a stand-up comedian for years. And you can find a couple of my appearances on my YouTube page. By the way, if to, over my left shoulders, all the ways you can find me, my website, Twitter, Instagram kind of thing. But I, well, one of the people in the audience was saying she just saw me on The Tonight Show, and that was over 30 years ago. So if you don't believe that I weighed 200 pounds, you can see I was doing a stand-up set with Johnny. And I moved out of LA five weeks ago near the Palm Springs area, and I wanted to do comedy one more time, so I went to the improv in Hollywood, and I did a pretty funny set. If, if that's on my YouTube page as well. So you can see that I really am a com I was a comedian. So now I'm gonna add my cocoa powder, and this smells really good. Uh, you know, people always say, what kind do you buy? I always say, buy the best of anything you can afford. When I was a pastry chef, we used I believe it was Ghirardelli, but my favorite cocoa powder was called Velrona from France. It was really dark and really delicious, and you can sometimes find it at Whole Foods or online. You know, it's interestingly enough, Hershey's makes a line of cocoa called the, the Special Dark. It's really, really good. So you don't have to be a cocoa snob. Um, I like the darker ones better, like King Arthur, because they make the desserts really, really dark. But, you know, Chocolate, I mean, there's no such thing as bad chocolate, really. I mean, seriously, they, you know. So what, what else do we need in here? We need a little bit of our non-dairy milk to get it to blend. And we'll put our vanilla powder in. And it's really not that hard, this recipe. Oh, there's the tamper. Okay. Okay. It smells so good. Can you guys smell it or no? Yeah. There's so much. You know, the chocolate is the, when, when they do lists, like ask people what the most craved foods are in the world, this is in my, my when I do my weight loss talk Tuesday night, chocolate always tops the list, yeah. not just for women, but it is the number one craved food in the world. Get, you know what number two is? Pizza. Yes, it is cheese, but it's in the form of pizza. Whoever said that? Smart lady. Are you the one that homeschools her? Oh, no, she does. Oh. I'm a baby. Oh, grandma, right? Well, same thing. Yeah. How addictive pizza is it has every addictive property it's got the bread which is addictive the flour it's got the salt it's got the cheese it often has meat on it um, there's sugar in the tomato sauce and then you drink it with the beer it's alcohol I mean they're good they're perfect uh, storms so look at this so is there a would you happen to have like a glass that like that's pretty that I could show how to plate this like um you know like a glass like the water glasses we have in dinner you're so cute. <laughs> Thank you. They, listen, this is, I, they have a hard job. I, you know, so I'm gonna show you how I played how I play this. Um, okay, 
So the guy that I've been like having this like flirtation with, does he want to come forward and taste this, or is he, <laughs> or is he too shy? Yes! Oh my God! Wow! Now, can I pick them or not, ladies and gentlemen? Oh my God! What's your name? Oh my God! You get more than a hug. Ninety forty-two. <laughs> What's your name? Oh my God, Trent! Of course. <laughs> you are. Uh, what do you do? You're so handsome. Are you a model? Yeah, sometimes. He is. I, you are sometimes a model. Wow. Would you like to take now? I, can I rub this all? No. <laughs> I'm gonna taste this. And Trent, a Leo named Trent. Is it good? You are. Thank you. So, was I kidding? Was I kidding? Did I found like a, are you with a girl right now? Is she over there? Oh, I approve. I actually approve of you. You're hot enough for him. You are darling. No, you, I approve of you. You're, you're very beautiful. Wow, what a figure. Do you do you exercise a lot? I mean, you look really good. You are too cute. You're cute, and you seem you seem nice too. Yeah. And when's your when's your birthday? I'll tell you. May, May what? Twenty fifth. Oh, a Gemini. That's actually that's actually gonna be that's not bad. That's good. That's good. No, it is because you she's she has a brain, not just a body. This one. Right. You guys are great. So you're from St. Louis. Where's Trent from? Uh, Florida. I'm from Florida too. Florida. Oh. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just. I know. Just, I know. Just please get pregnant as soon as possible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, wait, wait. Let me let me give you a taste because you are sweet. Oh my god. See, I like the, the fact that the, what I like about her is like she she played with you like that. She wasn't like eh. so that she's a good one. Yeah. No, but I, I like her. You guys are great. Can we hear it for these two young I They are going to make beautiful vegan babies. Oh, thank you. So now, um, I'm going to show you how to plate it. And this is, this. All, uh, you, you can see how thick it is already, right? But we still want to chill it. Is there anybody having a birthday today? Really? Is it really your birthday? Okay, what sign are you then? Okay. It is, since it's your birthday. Look at what you get. Kyle Campbell isn't doing this in his lecture. I'm telling you right now. He is not doing this. Happy birthday. You're so welcome. Is it really your birthday? Okay. Okay. I'm just, happy birthday. That is an episode of I Love Lucy. Do you remember? It's a, she's a my birthday too. I gave him two spoons. What more do you want? Uh, okay. Oh. All right. So, this is good stuff. Maybe I could sell it. I don't have enough money to buy that. Did you see that Swarovski, uh, those earrings? All right, moving on. Um, we need, uh, if you don't mind, don't don't throw this out. Like, just throw it on the people or something. Because I'll need this blender again in the near future. And if that, this might, it's melting. I think if we could maybe soften it just a little. How, how, how'd you get this gig? I mean, it's hard, right? Like, you sleep in the bowels of the ship and you work at night, right? You get, you're sweet. I mean, I, can we hear it for Emma? Because she does everything. I just come out and go like this. They work harder than, well, everybody on the ship works hard. Anybody that works on the ship works hard. But boy, I really appreciate, appreciate what you do. Yeah, do not yell at her. <laughs> All right. Um, for, for your hard work, um, I got you a half hour with Trent at 9.30. <laughs> I mean, come on, she works so hard. I hope you guys come to all my talks 
But you don't need the weight loss talk. But it's a silver. You know, the, the weight loss talk, I, whoa, I'm tripping. It, even if you don't need to lose weight, it's a really good talk. And, and, I, and I'm, gonna be, I'm not going to be funny at that talk, because when I'm doing PowerPoint, I can't. The humor is on one side of the brain, right? And the other stuff is on the other side. So I can't be funny at that talk. I'm telling you right now, be completely appropriate. And um, it's a good talk, because it's, it tells you what to eat, even if you don't want to lose weight. It's, this, it's really the same diet. It's just a slight tweak. So the next recipe we're going to do is called the brawnies. This is from my first book on processed, and it's very popular because it's really easy. It's three ingredients, four if you use the vanilla. So we have pitted dates, and I hope this is going to work because these are very, very hard. And th they don't have to be quite as soft as the medjool dates to work, but I might have to put a little water in here, which kind of makes it really sticky, which isn't so great for this recipe. So what I would do is when you buy your dates, you know, especially if you buy them in bulk, they can be really hard. I find that when I, Costco for me always works. The, the Hadley's dates at Costco always are never a problem. But sometimes when I buy dates at Sprouts, like in bulk, yeah. You have to get dates from the date people in Island, California. Yeah. Well, so well, they, they pick them right off. Really? Okay. Thank you. You know where I just moved. It's a, has anybody ever heard of where I live, Indio? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. It's the date capital of the world, and we just had the date festival actually. So, uh, yeah. Isn't that interesting? That I, there's a street called Deglet Nor at where I live. But, uh, but but the thing is, is for these recipes, you want them soft. For recipes where they're going to be soaked, it's not so important. So we're using a food processor fitted with an S blade because it somewhat looks like the letter S. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these two cups of walnuts and we are going to grind them into a flour. We don't want to keep grinding them and grinding them into a nut butter. You could do that if you ever wanted to make nut butter in your food processor, but we're going to just grind them into a flour. And always plug it in. Yep. Okay. That's a weird. This is the weirdest plug ever. European. European. Hey, if you're American in the living room, what are you in the bathroom? European. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I'm from. All right. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember all my clean jokes. You know. <laughs> okay. Can I get a sis? Oh, it does work. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. What? Help. Trent. <laughs> Do you think, like, if you have, like, a sexy name, you end up sexy? Like, is that just the way it is? You know, your mother names you and then you Okay. Just become that. See, now my legal name, I don't like any, I think when people call me, it drives me crazy because my legal name is Abby. And I know it's not a bad name, but when you're the fat kid, which I was, I was 160 pounds when I was 11 and I wasn't even five feet tall. I know, Flappy Abby. And so I never liked my name, so that's why I go by AJ. And Flabby Abby, Gabby Abby, and Shabby Abby, and Crabby Abby. So I don't like my name, that's why I changed it. Okay, can I get a help from somebody that knows what to do? Please, thank you. Okay, don't call, come running at once. I don't know why this is, Aww. why isn't this thing turning? Ugh, it's frustrating. I don't understand why it doesn't turn. Okay, let's take this out. All right, nuts. If you're going to eat nuts, I read the walnut is probably one of the better nuts to eat. It's kind of those only. I'm giving up. Can you help me? Esle? Esle. <laughs> You're from India, and I'm from Indio. India, Indio, eh? Oh, get it? You know what's funny? Is every day I ask Alexa, what's the temperature in Indio, California? And she gives me the temperature in India. <laughs> and that's the truth. I, I, I'm 
give, I'm giving up. I guess you can't. Is there anybody? I, this poor woman is suffering. I see how much you guys care. Okay. There. There. It's always easier at home when you have your own equipment, right? I want to show you how easy this is. I can't be well, I'm the first cooking demo. Hopefully, they'll get all these kinks worked out. This blade is very sharp. Last thing I want to do is. What? Take it out. Take the middle thing out. Just put the S blade. Oh, it won't turn without this. It's not going in. <laughs> this isn't going to work. All right, back to the help entertaining. So I'm going to try to find a joke that I can tell that's appropriate for all audiences. And give me a topic and then I can think of a joke. That's the youngster for the joke. Huh? That's the, that's the oh, you have a joke? Do you want to tell a joke? Tell a joke, come on. You can use my mic. Just come on up. What's your name? Cutie? How do you spell that? This is Brindley, and she's going to tell us a joke. She's, she's 10. She's beautiful. Where are you from? Arkansas. What did Tennessee? What Arkansas? <laughs> All right. So, When did the lumberjacks start cutting lumber? When he started in September. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you going to be in the talent show on Thursday night? Just say no. You're good. All right. All right. Here, I finally thought of a joke. It's not going to offend the people that are religious or children. So here's one. Okay, it's one of my favorite jokes. So um, second grade class. You know how like first day of school, you know, the teacher says, you know, what's your name, blah, blah, blah. So first day of school, second grade class, teacher wants the kids to introduce themselves. What's their name? And she says, and tell me what your father does for a living. So, you know, Billy raises his hand, says, hey, teacher, my name's Billy, and my father's a fireman. She goes, oh, that's very nice. And then little Susie raises her hand and says, hey, teacher, my name's Susie, and my father's a doctor. And then Tommy raises his hand and says, hey, teacher, my name's Tommy. And she goes, well, what does your father do for a living? And he goes, my father's dead. She goes, oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. What did he do before he died? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. See, I can get a laugh clean. I got a whole new career in the old folks' home in India. Yeah. Indio, I can't, Indio, I live in Indio. Oh, all right. Is there anybody here from the kitchen staff that could help me that's here from the cruise? No. Couldn't they get a new food processor from the kitchen? Yeah. Just get a new one? Just get it. Yeah. I don't think you're going to figure it out, Miss. Trent, you're, s even if you can't figure it out, it's like, I'm just kidding. All right. So, what do you guys want to talk about? I have a joke. Another joke. Grandfather's car? No. When I die, I want to die peacefully in my sleep, not like the the people in his car screaming and yelling. I don't get it. We can all do yoga or something. Another joke. Okay, clean joke, clean joke. I got joke. a clean joke. Yeah. Why do cows have hooves and not toes? Why do cows have hooves and not toes? Because they're lactose intolerant. They're lactose intolerant. That's cute. How many vegans does it take to change the light bulb? Two. One to change the bulb and the other one to angrily read the list of ingredients. On the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Make fun of the vegans. Yeah. Um, yeah. When cannibals 
ate a missionary, they got a taste of religion. That's cute. <laughs> Cannibals don't eat clowns, though, because they taste funny. <laughs> These two cannibals were talking, and one said, and, and, the, and the wife said, you know, we're having your mother for dinner tonight. He goes, I hate leftovers. <laughs> oh, my God. This, yeah. Oh, you heard it in church. Oh, you! I actually got a joke about church. So there was a um, little boy was attending church, and uh, they they were fl flying the ha the flag at half mass outside the church. And so the little boy said to the to the reverend, he goes, "Why is the flag being flown at half mass?" And the reverend said, "It's too high." All right. Thank you. Who figured it out? The guy? Oh wait, wait, we got you. All right, we'll, we will reward you very soon. So the reverend says to the little boy, it's to honor the men that die in the service. And the little boy said, the 9 o'clock or the 11? Okay. Right. So let's get back to cooking. Thank you for your help. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't they use the other part? All right. There was a part missing? That one that I put on you know, put the nuts back. Always eat your nuts raw, not salted if you're going to eat them. So best way for health benefits. Ah, soaking? Is, is, is There are benefits to soaking your nuts. The thing is, in a recipe like this, the wet nuts would not work because we're trying to grind it into a flour sort of similar to a breadcrumb consistency. If I were to let this go, it would eventually turn into nut butter, which means you can easily and inexpensively make your own nut butters. So, there we go, and just crumbs like this, and then I'm going to add my cocoa powder, half a cup. You have the recipe, so don't worry, they're in the back of your book. And if you can't eat chocolate, you could still make these without them. You can make them with carob powder. If you're going to use carob powder, carob is a Mediterranean pod, and it's a fruit, and it tastes a little bit better roasted. So we're just going to incorporate that. dates. So as I mentioned, um, you don't want to use soap dates for this because it's going to be too wet. I had to put some water in because of the fact that they were so hard. So I'm going to take this water out. Never throw your soap water out for dates. This is what you could be using to sweeten your coffee, your tea. So this is this stuff is gold. And this is a way, great way to get off of sugar. So I hope this works with the slightly wetted dates, but we'll see if it did. Or did not. You can get a brownie pan. It's called a silicone brownie pan. It's brown. It has 24 squares. Amazon for like seven bucks. Sometimes Walmart, Bed Bath and Beyond. And it's really fun. You can just press them in and have these individual brownies. And then if you want, take a little walnut and put it on top. One of the, if I'm going to serve this like at a potluck or something, what I'll do is I will press a walnut into the top so that people know that this has nuts in it because sometimes at a potluck, the little slip that says the ingredients falls away. If somebody were to have a nut allergy and they saw this, they thick. So I try to push a little nut in the top. So this is a little bit wetter than I would have liked because of the fact that, you know, the thing. But So what you can do is you can just roll it into balls. and eat it. And what you can do is roll it into something like like cocoa powder. If we had a little more, we could roll it into coconut. How is it? Amazing. Boy, this is a crowd that just really... <laughs> Three second rule, don't worry. Ship is clean. have got to learn to catch. Yeah. 
oh boy, we got a guy here that really wants to go in. See, this is a smart lady, by the way. This, this, this woman, Trent, if, if the pretty lady ever dumps you, I would go with her. She's smart. She figured out that she could get up instead of having me throw it at her. But where's the guy that really wants to go long? Okay, this will be great. He caught it! Actually, wait a second. You're not bad. You're so... Oh, you're Oh, wait a minute, and you're Catherine. Heck, you're married. I, I, I can't mess with this one because I actually know her. She contributed a rest of my book, but you are good looking too. Yeah, you just got married, huh? Darn. Congratulations. Joseph, wow. You like my balls? Yeah. All right. Hello. Hey, wait, I know you. I remember you. You're cute. You're cute too. Hi. Hi. Do you want to come up and tell a joke like the other little girl? No. No? I know you. Your mom's pretty. That's how come you're pretty. You're lucky you got a pretty mom. You know that, right? Yeah. You're beautiful. Okay. There we go. All right. Well, let's see. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> It's fun throwing. I feel, you know like how you throw things to monkeys in the zoo? That's what this is like. Not that you guys are monkeys. See, I think people that are willing to try to catch are so brave. You know, here's the thing. You guys have heard of something called a Lara bar? Yeah. You got right, Lara Bar. She, she made millions selling that to General Foods. I met her when the product first came out at the um, at the uh, Portland Raw Food Festival. This is a Lara Bar. It doesn't have to be chocolate. It doesn't have to be walnut. It could be pecan. It could be hemp seeds. You could put any flavor in. You could put lime and lemon and orange and nobody over here. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. See, she was she she did like this. This is good because she knew that somewhere it had to land. That was very good. Hey, oh, oh, yay! All right. Now look at my hands, though. Oh, you're coming up because you're a kid. You want to tell a joke for for a brownie? You're, these kids are adorable. You have cute hair, too. Really nice. Hey, Valerie. Got a few left. Maybe you can throw it at the photographer. You know you won. Who? Oh, all the way there? Who's shy? Come here. Well, if you tell me she's shy, you know I'm going to embarrass her. So that's, like, not the right thing to do. Are there any more kids in the audience? You're cute, too. All right. You're 18? Wow. Wow. Hi. You guys having a good time in the uh, cheap seat section over there? All right. Now what do I do? I gotta, how much time do I have? Does anyone want to lick my hands off? All right. Well, there's more here, but I think we've had enough of this. But somebody else wants to throw. Thank you. What do I do at this point? I guess I take a napkin, right? I, oh, water. I am the messiest chef. Now, here's the thing. If you, if you didn't want to roll them into balls, what you could do is just press it into a Pyrex. Or I actually prefer the nonstick silicone baking mat, uh, baking sheets or baking, um, not mats, but, you know, they have pans and stuff. So this is coming clean. Could you use it like a crust? Yeah, oh, yes, thank you. Great question. So she said, can you use it like a crust? I'm, absolutely. That's a brilliant use of this. Company comes at the last minute. You saw this took seconds to make. Press it into a pie plate, put some strawberries on it, something like that. Yes, absolutely. That, that is a crust. That is a raw food crust. So, all right. Now we're going to make the, actually, Emma, are you still here? So Emma, I need this back to make the crust. Um, and I, I don't know how to get this off. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Very good. Um, no, the lid is clean, thank you. So I'm going to make this next dessert. It's called the mango 
a, a mango tart. And you may be getting it as a tart, you may be getting it just as a mousse, so it's versatile that way. So we're going to make the filling first. And this has already been pureed. I usually just use frozen organic mango from Costco because it's just easier than trying to find that pit in the middle of the mango. But they're using frozen organic mango puree, so apparently you can get just the puree. So that's why this is already pureed, which will make it actually very easy to puree. And I'm gonna just put it in the uh, Vitamix. You can see some of it's still a little bit frozen and that's okay. And of course you can use fresh mango, but it's just, it's so cheap at Costco to buy the five pound bag of organic mango and that's what I'm doing. Now, one of the things I like about this recipe is that I, I made it up in 20 minutes. I was in an Iron Chef competition with Chef Ramses Bravo, and I was given cashews, mangoes, and oats. And I had to come up with something in this one, uh, uh, in that particular year. And it, it's really quite a nice dessert. So we've got the frozen mango, or the frozen defrosted mango, or the fresh mango, and to bump up the mango taste up even more, I'm using two ounces of dried mango without sugar that I added a little bit of hot water to, just to soften it, because even though it's a Vitamix, you know, it's just more friendly to, to do that. Then we are going to add the lime juice. If any time you're using fresh lime juice, always add the zest. It just imparts a little bit more flavor. And I just want to check my recipe. Yeah, the zest. Oh, now this is what's going to make it like, this is what's going to give it that, like, this is so delicious. The cashews, raw cashews. You don't really need to soak cashews because they're generally pretty soft anyway. And right now, this is a mousse once I blend it. This is perfect for company. We can layer it in dishes like glasses with, with either raspberry coulis or fresh raspberries. Your company will love this because the richness from the fat from the walnuts, it's just delicious. Oh. Gotta plug it in again. Oh boy. They need more plugs here. Okay. All right. Uh, I need like a full time uh, somebody. Okay. Is there an electrician here? <laughs> Is there anybody that can tell me what I'm doing wrong? We need a person here, seriously, like to stand next to me. I don't, I don't know how to do this. Thank you. I don't understand electricity. <laughs> but I'm not getting frustrated. See? I'm not one of those chefs that gets feeling. Thank you. Oh, there's a little piece in there? Thank you. Oh, I'd give you something, but I don't have anything. Thank you. Okay. Well, Trent is probably available at 10. Because so, I've got a book from 9.30 to 10. So. All right. Here we go. Thank you. Whoa. iPhone because I want to show you how powerful this blender truly is. Okay. Nope. No takers. Okay, there we go. So now this is the filling. And I need the crust to show you when she comes back with it how to make the crust. Okay. If I had a little cup is there another little pretty glass? Hey, who are all these people behind me? You just want to look at my ass or something? I don't get it. <laughs> Class is over here, people. Oh, sorry, I said a bad word. Oh, can I have that? Thank you. Um, no, because I want to make a pretty parfait. All right. Now. So do we have another birthday here today? A real birthday, or is it just... I should give it to Catherine LaRusso because she just got married. So we can use fresh raspberries or we can use the coulis, which is the raspberry sauce, which I'm gonna make. But you can serve this to regular people, I promise. Okay. 
Thank you. Who is not yet vegan? I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not yet vegan. Oh my God. Is there a couple here that's not yet vegan? Like two people that are together? Yeah, my husband's back there. Why is the husband back there? He's not vegan. Let me see. Are there two people sitting next to each other that are not yet vegan? Okay. I'm not trying to embarrass you. I'm trying to change you by giving you delicious vegan food to have you at least please consider becoming vegan. All right. All right. What? What do you mean the regular stuff you pour in? Oh yeah, you can. If you're not worried about sugar or, or alcohol, you can use regular extract. My re it, so so if it's alcohol-free vanilla, I use about a teaspoon. If it's if it's alcohol-free, I use a tablespoon. If it's regular with alcohol, I use a teaspoon. If it's vanilla powder, I use a half a teaspoon. If it, if it was possible, we'd all just use vanilla beans. But there's a shortage of them because vanilla ice cream is the most popular flavor of vanilla in the world. Never use artificial vanilla. That's a byproduct of the wood industry. It's made from sulfites and it tastes terrible. <laughs> uh, but vanilla beans are so expensive. Like in Gelson's, this high-end store in Rancho Mirage where I live, one vanilla bean can be $6. Oh, wow. But the, boy, there's nothing like those seeds. Okay, so let's, uh, let's make the crust. So the crust, I'm going to use... One of the things we have to do though is because this food processor, they just washed it. When you're using anything like grains or nuts to grind, it, it's gotta be dry because otherwise you'll have pesto. So when, um, we wanna make sure it's dry because right now it's not. How'd she get in? Oh, it goes the other way. So I'm just gonna dry this off. And I'm gonna use two, uh, two cups of oats. Oats and nuts are often interchangeable. In these types of recipes, if you're trying to lower the fat, because there is a lot of fat in this because of the nuts already. So it made the, the crust a little bit less fat by using two cups of oats. It's the same principle. I'm grinding something into a flour-like consistency, adding dates to it's It's not rocket science. So you can use any combination. Really. You can use half oats, half nuts. You can use something like coconut. But you do want to start with a dry food processor. Oh, I think it doesn't have to go any other way. Oh, not you again. Oh, I should have just went with it wet, huh? Is it okay? Who is the lady that helped me last? Thank you, Emma. Are you, how old are you? 28. What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> you already, I thought you were going to say you're not grown up. All right. Okay, so I'm going to add my oats. And you know, believe it or not, rolled oats are kind of processed. I don't know if you guys know that, but like oats... This is not what oats look like in nature. It's called the oat groat, which by the way, if you haven't eaten, it's so much more delicious than rolled oats. Seriously, it's like toothsome, it's like rice. And then they cut it and then it becomes the steel cut oat. The rolled oat is actually the third incarnation, which is pretty processed and it's flattened and steamed. So that's why it's gonna grind so Oh God. <laughs> oh. oh, not this again. Boy, that's funny. So, um, these two carrots were driving down the 405 freeway in Los Angeles. They were in a car accident, a terrible car accident. And they were taken to the emergency room, and the first carrot was pronounced dead on arrival. The second carrot, the doctor comes in, he says, you know, I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is you're going to live, but the bad news is you're going to be a vegetable the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I now got the kid trying my best, trying my best. Okay, not working now. What's going on? <coughs> Emma, come back. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. I'm going to never leave my side for the rest of the cruise. Please. Oh, you know, I should really... I don't even think this has been cooking. Is this still even on? I'm sorry, I just don't understand how to use this cookware. Is it on? It, it doesn't feel hot, though. So we, instead of rice pudding, we have rice soup. This will cook. This will cook. Is 
that one better? Yeah, so let's use this one. Maybe it was the cookware. This shouldn't take long. This smells so good. Cardamom is, is just a wonderful spice. A lot of people grind it themselves. Okay, so did Emma get this to work? Yes! Thank you, Emma. Then we're going to take our dates. I'm going to take this liquid out. Again, remember, I always wanted to really start with a drier date. Don't save this. Anybody that's trying to get off sugar. You know, sugar's been like linked to just about every disease process from tooth decay to cancer. And I just, I don't recommend it, really. You know, I think the best amount is done. The American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society says if we're going to eat processed sweeteners, we need only five, we shouldn't have more, not we need, we don't need any, but we should have no more than 5% of our total calories. Well, for a woman, you know, that's that's like 100 calories of sugar. That's like five teaspoons. What are you going to eat for five teaspoons of sugar? Nothing. So get off it. You'll look better. You'll feel better. You know, it's very aging, too, sugar, by the way. I used to work at, before I became a chef, I was an activity director at a retirement home. And the, the, the old folks that ate sugar were always really wrinkly, you know? And alcohol is sugar, by the way. If you're drinking alcohol, you're drinking sugar. So now we're going to do this. it in a Vitamix it just it it, it, it it really is I mean especially with this much volume I'm even having a hard time doing it in this small food processor so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of it out I'm sure you guys have heard things like that sugar is more addictive than cocaine and things like that so it's uh, it's not good stuff so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more of the dates to get it I've got some dates here that I've been soaking Oh, that date water smells good. Again, it, it's easier to serve this just as a parfait, quite honestly. There we go. So I want to tell you guys about this, the real truth about weight loss. I'm doing my first online summit. It's absolutely free. It doesn't start till you get home from the cruise on March March 16th. It goes for eight days, and I interview the 34 of the top experts in everything, really, medical doctors and uh, cancer survivors and um, dietitians. Thank you and stuff like that. And uh, I think you'll like it. So now what we do is we're going to press this into a pan. This is not probably the ideal pan. The ideal pan is a tart pan where the bottom, it's a circle and it's fluted and then you push it up. But just to give the idea of how we make this, we're putting this in this. And then we're going to press it in. And... Again, I mean, this I could do this a little better. Usually you're not cooking and telling jokes and things like that. So at home, it's easier. And I'm sure I have a video of how to do this. Right, by the way, the little balls that I was throwing at you, you could do those with oats. There's no reason you can't. And cocoa powder. You press, you press. Okay. This smells really good. Yeah, it was the burger because this is cooking right now. So this this will be ready soon. Are they serving you guys already? Remember when I said eat the less sweet ones first, okay? Um, wait, I gotta see this little. Is it good? Cause she's a kid. Is it good? Oh wow, the little kid likes it. Thank you. If the kid likes it, it's good. That's Matt Frazier's family. 
He's awesome. So if you have a fluted lip, it's nice because you, you know, it makes that little pattern, but we don't. So I'm just going to push it up with the side. Use this part of the hand. Makes it pretty easy. So, you know, these, these desserts are guilt-free in the aspect that there's no cruelty, there's no animal products, eggs, dairy, there's no cholesterol. They're not calorie-free, you know, especially the ones with the nuts, but I'd still rather see people eat these than sugar and flour because sugar and flour are so addictive. Sugar and flour, any kind of sugar, any kind of flour, we'll talk about that on the Tuesday night lecture, go through the same refining process as drugs and alcohol. Eat unprocessed foods. Even if they're calorically dense, it's still better than eating sugar and flour. So now we're gonna pour the filling on top of the pie. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Ooh, yes. I wish I had what's called an offset spatula here, uh, which is very nice for things like that. But instead, I'm using a spoon. Oh, this looks so good. My husband loves this pie. No, it's raw. It's so, you know what I love about raw dessert? Oh, I did not put the lime juice in something, but it's okay. Who wants to drink this? I think the lime juice was supposed to go in the crust, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's not a big deal. And so then what we'll do is we'll just make the top. Now, see, I wanted to make a raspberry sauce for this, and if there's time, I will. I can just put it in the blend. You know what? Why not? Let me show you. So... Is there a little kid that wants to come up and put the raspberries on for me while I'm doing something else? No? All right. Thanks for all your help, people. That's okay. But so, do you know that I can balance four raspberries on my nose? If there's time, I will show you that trick. But this is just so pretty. Raspberries and mango, what could be better together, you know? It's just a pretty combination. And... <laughs> You can feel proud to serve these desserts to your family. I will garnish this with time. We can make a smiley face. I mean, real food. Oh, the, the, the couple considering veganism, they left? Oh, no. So now are you considering it more? Thank you. Appreciate that. What would it take for you guys to go vegan just for a month, just to see? Just to, just to see. Like an experiment. Like an experiment. Okay, but you know what? Lent starts on March 6th. Maybe just do an experiment, you know? I got to tell you, um, let's see. Uh, you know, there's a saying, vegan is the new Viagra. <laughs> if you eat a green leaf, you don't need a blue pill. So, okay. So we'll get back to, to doing the top of that. Okay. So now I'm going to make the sauce. This blender is not a completely free of the mousse, but that's okay because I'll just add my frozen raspberries to it. And I used all my dates up, so I'll add a little bit of my date water. This will be fine. And you know what? I'll add this lime juice now, just a little of it. Oh, and I found some vanilla. I'll add that. That's how I cook at home. I never measure anything, honestly. Honestly, I don't. Oh, this is starting to click, so I think that means I'm supposed to turn it down. Ooh, this smells good now. Oh, wow. Which of the two recipes that you still eat? What, oh, so uh, the recipes up here that I still eat is this one. I don't eat nuts anymore. I can't. I, I'm a food addict. Even though I'm thin now, I can't eat nuts. So um, I eat this. But I've tasted this. Because, I, I mean, when I'm in an Iron Chef, I mean, I can't. What am I going to do? Like, here, I hope it's good? No. I can't. i got to taste it. But I do eat this. I love this. But I, I really... I think yellow raisins are better. I don't know, I just do. Mm. Now this isn't thick yet, but the truth is, is it, you know, it will thicken as it cools or as it continues to cook. So, oh God, I can't. Please, please. In my hands are all things. I, can't, I would eat, you know, I can't eat chocolate because it gives me migraines, That's the, so I had to stop doing that. Oh, oh, I need you, I need you. Uh, nothing worse than sticky hands, huh? Oh, uh, the blender. The, the blender. All right. 
So you guys enjoying it so far? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The presentation was uh, was free. Thank you. Thank you. Oh yeah. Raspberry coulis, easiest thing to make, raspberries and dates, and then we have a beautiful sauce, so if we want to plate it, I don't know if I should try to plate it now while it's not chilled because, you know, the mousse is still moussey, but what we'll do is we'll continue. Do you guys have any questions? Because I'm basically done with the recipes, and hopefully they did a good job and they taste like they're supposed to. Yeah. Oh, what do I think about stevia? So I don't, so it's gonna depend what your goals are. Because I think the artificial, okay, so stevia is not an artificial sweetener in that the stevia leaf is found in nature. But most people that consume stevia are not consuming the leaf. They're consuming a liquid or a powder, which is highly processed, which again goes through the same refining process as drugs and alcohol. So the artificial sweeteners can actually be more addictive than sugar. Because what happens is, is we have taste buds on the tip of our tongue for sweet, as we do for salty. And so when our tongue tastes sweet, our brain gets really excited thinking that calories are gonna come. But the non-caloric sweeteners like stevia, xylitol, erythritol, mannitol, never deliver calories. And so what happens is they actually perpetuate overeating. So stevia is the absolute worst thing you can do if you're trying to lose weight. The zero calorie sweeteners are even worse than sugar for weight loss. The other problem with stevia is that it is a nightmare for your microbiome. And all the gastroenterologists, vegan or not, will tell you do not use any of those um, zero calorie sweeteners because they're horrible for our GI tract. So, I'm not a fan. I think stevia is so addictive. There's a girl on the cruise here, a friend of mine. She's not at my class right now, but I mean, she was slender, but she, I mean, everything, little dropper bottle in her water stevia. So I'm not a fan of those, especially for people that are trying to overcome food addictions, sugar addictions, or get off sugar. So, yeah, thanks. Good question. Is that true of the leaves if you grow the plant? It, I think if you grow the plant and chew the leaf, it's probably not the same. You know, when you think about what cocaine is, cocaine is a highly processed white powder from the coca leaf. But the coca leaf in nature was just a mild stimulant. The workers, when they were climbing up the Andes, would chew a cocoa leaf, and then for 20 minutes it would be like a cup of coffee. But then you process it into cocaine, and it's a whole other thing. And same thing with stevia. I think it tastes really, I don't think it tastes good, but I, but, you know, I think, but it's it's very hard to get off of it. You know, what's worse than stevia is uh, the stuff they put in diet soda, like aspartame and all that stuff. So, you know, if, if, you know, I always go back to the question, if, when, when people ask me questions, is what, what Jack Lane said over 80 years ago, if God made it, eat it, if man made it, don't eat it. And if you have to buy this, this liquid or this powder, you know, also the thing is, is if you, when you start eating healthier, healthy food tastes good, and you don't need all these extra things to get stimulation from. And when you put, you know, the question is, is what are you putting your stevia on? Because if you're putting it in coffee, I'd say, well, coffee's not good, so don't do that. You know, and if you're putting, you don't, I, I'm not a fan of it. And this is somebody that suffered from severe uh, sugar addiction for a very long time. Um, so I, erythritol, really bad too. I know some of the people like that, and it's, 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 not, it's not good. What if you can't make it in your own kitchen, don't eat it. So if you can't make stevia liquid or powder, I wouldn't eat it. What about when you're honey? Honey. Or maple syrup. Yeah. If, if you go to my YouTube channel, I, have, I show you two ways to do it. On, on my YouTube channel, Chef AJ, you can make it out of almonds and you can make it out of just almond butter and water. It's, it's, it's depending on how fatty you want it. One tablespoon of, of, of water, uh, one tablespoon of almond butter to one to three cups of water, depending on how thick and rich you want it. And do you have a preference on which almond butter? I just, I just get a raw brand like Marantha. Okay. Yeah, just get a, definitely raw. Now, somebody said has another question. How about honey? Well, honey's not vegan. And it's bee vomit. And they, you know, bees, bees get harmed and bees, bees get harmed when we take their honey. So as an ethical vegan, I have to say no to honey. But, but you guys, what you have to understand, it's not, you know, I mean, cocaine is probably better than meth, but I still don't recommend it. And, and so the thing is, is, it's not a question of what kind of sugar we eat, it's a question of how much. 
And the thing is, is eat whichever, if you're going to eat sugar, eat whichever one you're going to keep to the minimum. And again, that would be five teaspoons a day for a woman, maybe a little bit more than a man. The thing is, is it, when you use sweeteners, you don't appreciate how good fruit is, and it may, and then you need everything sweet. So I don't recommend any sweeteners except for fruit, and that was the purpose of this yep. class. Yeah, so, and again, what are you sweetening? You know, like who is it? What is, what's the doctor that says if you got to put sweetener on it, you don't like your food very much? So, this is what it looks like. I wish I could press this up to show you how pretty it is. And then what you can do, thank you, is you take, get a little squeeze bottle from the 99 cent store, and then I love to decorate the plate with like stripes and things. And, and this is a really wonderful dessert you can serve for company. And this is a really wonderful breakfast, I think, or I'm mean, a dessert if it's not too sweet. And I think I have come to, yeah, I know you guys probably have another, oh, got another time. But I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. I'm very accessible on the cruise. The reason you probably don't see me a lot is because I'm always doing consults. But when I'm out, you're not bothering me if you have questions or want pictures or whatever. And my book signings Wednesday at 745. How do you feel about adding things like ginger or turmeric? Yeah, ginger, uh, spices are wonderful. Uh, absolutely. Ginger, turmeric, two of the best. Um, try to come to my lecture Tuesday. You'll see another side of me, a very appropriate side actually. Um, yeah, because when I'm cooking, I, go, I just go crazy when I'm cooking. Yes, with the... Well, agave is actually higher in fructose than high fructose corn syrup. And again, you can't make it in your kitchen and it's really, really sweet. And I know they say it's low glycemic, but so is cream and so is ice cream. So again, I'm not a fan of any sweeteners except for fruit. Um, you know, if you're not overweight, not a food addict, and not a diabetic, I guess a little's okay, but, but you can make such yummy stuff without it, so what do you need it for? You don't need it, right? Anybody? White chocolate. White chocolate? I don't know much about that. I mean, it's very high in fat, but I used to like it when I was little. Mm, we, anybody want more? We got this. Yum, yum. All right, well, I guess class dismissed, and I'm here. I'll stay here and answer questions. Thank you.